Hello, my friends. Yes, the werewolf stands against the wall. I can't hear static normally anymore. I tense up now. It isn't just that I hear it as overlapping screams, but I swear that I keep hearing the word help in there. Anyway, I got another package last night. I was heading out to my car when my foot hit another manila envelope. Since this was my first day back after my break, I took the envelope with me. It should be quiet at work. Better fucking is anyway. I kept my radio off to avoid any static screaming, and got to work on time. Got changed, and settled in. The envelope never left my hands. Another five grand, and what looks to be a haphazard collection of pages, with a bloody handprint on the top page. One of them is a cover letter for lack of a better term. Hello again. This is from a case I worked on that was not given to the police. It is a missing person case. Due to client confidentiality, I cannot give the name to you. But, this is another oddity. Looking at the Journal of Miscellaneous Paper, I look at the symbols on the front. It looked like Kanji had rough sex hieroglyphics then vomited all over it. The Rosetta Stone would be easier to decipher. I put it to the side, and start to read. My name is Keith, and I don't know where I am. I had always loved the paranormal, but now since I entered this house, I am in fear of it. My cell phone is dead and I have no idea how long I have been trapped. When I first entered this hell hole, I was excited, as it was one of those something jumped at me empty homes. Never should have come alone. Anyway, I found this piece of paper and a pencil. This room, which I think is some sort of dining area, seems to have enough light for me to write this. Something is in here, I can. Feel it isn't the right way to describe it. It is like in those open world rebounds per game games, where if you have somewhere marked on a map, the player can see the indicator on the compass, it is like that. Except this thing is hunting me. The page stops there. The writing gets a bit shaky at the end. Don't know much about the various types of paper in the world. This looks like it should crumble or be less sturdy. I turn to the next page. Keith here. That thing has been whispering to me again. The things it describes is horrifying. It would be like a gazelle hearing everything the lion will do to it when it gets caught. Every vivid detail. I would piss myself but I don't think I have any fluid left to do that anymore. I can't remember when I last ate, drank or slept. I think I have been in here for over a week, but my cell phone died in the first hour of exploration. I tried drawing a map but I am not very good. Flipping this page over, I can see a very crude map of a two-story house. Nothing is concretely labeled. Everything has a question mark next to it if not two or three different room types. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, laundry, dining room, altar room. Some scratched out and new ones written in the space. This makes no sense. It is like that house in that Stephen King novel that kept growing in size. It seems Keith is an observant person, going by the next few pages. He has stated on a page that he is leaving this page in a particular room. Maybe he was able to solve the map in conundrum. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I tried to leave pages in the rooms I visit, but when I went back, the rooms were different again and the pages were fucking gone. Fortunately a study I stumbled into harm more paper and pens. That thing caught me in the hallway. It is like some form of werewolf if Gaija drew one. If I ever get out of this, I will swear off all paranormal shit. This needs to stop. I thought about trying to figure out the history to this place. 
but it is like every horror story ever written. Ghosts, ghouls, demonic possession, haunted objects, psychological horror. I managed to get away from that thing, but it took a couple of fingers. Good thing I am right-handed, I guess. I can't seem to find any doors, but the next time I see a staircase leading up, I will take it. Down seems like a terrible, terrible idea. The writing seems steadier, maybe Keith used a desk to write on this time. But I get a slight nagging feeling like something is watching me. Probably just one of the security cameras. Hopefully anyway. How big is this shitbox? I lost count how many flights of fucking stairs I just climbed. I am in some sort of basement now, I think. A nail on the stairwell ripped into my arm, and now it hurts to move it. I am so tired, but I can feel it closer now. It tells me how good I taste and how I make it hungrier for more, and my stomach seems to growl in agreement. This house. I never noticed it before, hindsight and all that, but it never felt right. When I stepped into its boundary, there was no noise. Not white noise, or animals and stuff like that. Just hollow, empty. I wish I. The paper is ripped. Nothing further on this piece of paper. As I put it to the side, I feel something chuckle. Like sitting in a car with the base cranked all the way up. It is an unnerving sensation, to say the least. Then I remember something. Keith mentioned an altar room earlier, didn't he? I flick through the pages, but I can't find the passage. But I am sure he did. Damn, anyway, I pick up the next page. When I find you, little morsel, my fangs shall rend. This page goes on for some time, and while I work in a morgue and have seen shit, I am not going to transcribe this to the internet. Who knows who will? Where did that page fucking go? I had it in my goddamn hand. How could it fucking disappear? There aren't many pages left, and I promised I would get this out onto the internet. If I ever make it out of this, I will apologize to my parents for being a dick of a kid. I will be a better big brother and a nice boyfriend. I will be attentive to those around me and endeavor to make sure no one else falls prey to this nightmare. I have seen other journals in this place. I was in the 30 something library when I glanced at a journal of scrap paper on the desk. A woman named Hannah was stuck here too. No, not a woman. A girl. Seven years old, and that monster toyed with her too. Pretended to be a good dog, and slept with her to protect her, until it presumably ate her. I can hear that thing out there. It whispers how much he enjoys playing with it. I don't know why it won't just end it, but I can see it now. Sitting like a dog at the door to this library. It is smiling at me. I only have stumps on my hands and feet now, but I will go over these journals because I think it will torment me further by just sitting at the only exit to this room. Keith's writing is neater. More composed. No shaking or anything. But, stumps. How long has this poor bastard been stuck in that hell? I am going to end this soon. I have gone through dozens of journals, all people who have experienced all that I have. The attacks, the hunger, the thirst, they're wandering through corridors that won't end, or the too many rooms for a two-story building. People of all ages, genders, social status. Nothing is spared this monster's tyranny. Each journal has a different theory about what that thing is. The only constant throughout the journals. That nightmarish werewolf thing. Cursed by God, blessed by Satan, an alien life form left on this planet to kill everything, missing partner of 682. A wolf that got twisted by druids, other ones I am too tired to recite. 
But this theory seems new, from what I can tell. This is a literal hellhound, sitting at the spot where Lucifer struck the ground when he was kicked out of heaven. Wrong. The thing chuckles. A chuckle that sounds like a living animal in a grinder. Looking up, above the thing I will let consume me soon, I can see a digital clock. With the date as well. Eight and a half months. That is how long I have been trapped here. I shall walk myself over to this hellhound, and allow it to consume me now. I just wish for it to end. I am stunned. Eight and a half months. In that living nightmare. I pray to whatever god that the souls of those poor people get some peace. Flipping the page over to the rest, I see a letter, typed. This is a case I worked last year. It is one of many private cases I have worked, but one of the few truly terrifying ones. The people that hired me weren't his family, but his friends and his fiancée. His family was killed in a car accident a couple of weeks after he disappeared. No one survived. His fiancée wanted to hire a bite to look into his case, in fear the police might let it go on the back burner. They showed me the forums he frequented, and I pieced it together with some outside help. I found the address where he went. Took two months to find it, as it was. Well, you will see it in the photographs. I took a photo of the journal and the house. But after reading this, and getting that nagging hunted feeling, I couldn't bring myself to inflict that nightmare upon his fiancée. By all accounts and records, he was a good man. You were chosen for this literally at random. I am sorry for this, but I hope you persevere and help get this word out. I try to ignore that feeling of being watched out of my mind. Putting that letter aside, I look at the two photographs. One is of the journal on the ground. The other is of a fucking doghouse. Flipping over the photographs, I see a note of the back of the one of the journal. Hopefully, my new master will play with me for just as long. The message on the back of the doghouse photo reads. Brief history. House seen as haunted, gets demolished. Doghouse gets rebuilt next day. No one can figure it out. Rumors of screams heard at night, but no one could fit inside.